Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Warbands Battle Reports channel. In this video we are playing 140k in a 500 points match that sees Necrons vs Astra Militarum. I'm Simone and I will play Astra. Hi, I'm Andrea and I will play Necrons. Before we started, we wanted to let you know that we just opened the channel and it would help us a lot if you could subscribe. And don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss the next battle reports. Thank you guys. Today's mission is incisive attack taken from the Corus book. The two armies will have to deploy within these two areas. There are four battle objectives and they are arranged in this way. In this mission, when an army conquers an objective, it remains in its possession until it's conquered by the enemy army, so there's no need to keep troops within 3 inches of it. As secondary objectives, Necrons have chosen Purge the Vermin, Bring it down and Surgical Assault, while Astra Militarum have Slay the Warlord, Raise the Banners High and Domination. The match will last 5 rounds, at the end of which whoever has accumulated more victory points will win. Both armies start with 3 command points as both are organized as combat patrol. Let's move on to the description of the armies. My droid army belongs to Necrons. the- What? Necrons. That's what I said. <laughs> sure. Anyway, my army belongs to the Mephrit dynasty, which allows me to add 3 inches to the range characteristic of ranged weapons, excluding pistols. Also, it gives them an additional minus 1 penetration if the target is less than half range, and it allows me to activate both directives of the protocol of the Ventful Stars. As general of the army, I have chosen the Overlord, who is equipped with Hyperface Glaive and Tachyon Arrow. As general trait, I chose the Dynasty trait, Merciless Tyrant, which gives him a plus 1 to the strength and attacks characteristics. As a relic, I chose Gauntlet of the Conflagrator, a pistol that automatically hits the target and instead of rolling dice to wound, I roll a d6 for each model in the unit chosen. With 6, the model suffers one mortal wound. Next on the list are the Immortals, armed with a Tesla Carbine that scores 2 additional hits for every hit roll of 6. Considering their ballistic skill and saving throw both at 3+, plus, I'm sure my Immortals will be able to put the Astra's units in trouble. Then there are 12 Negron Warriors with Gauss Player, there is a rapid fire weapon. I will try to use them to keep Astra's unit away from capturing the objectives. Last but not least, there is my Canoptech Doomstalker equipped with the Doomsday Blaster, which has two powers of fire, low power for when it moves and high power when it doesn't move. I will use the increased power to take out the enemy vehicles as soon as possible. In addition, it is equipped with a Twin Gauss player. My Astra Militarum are back on the battlefield after facing the Tyranids in the previous Warhammer 40k battle report. This time, they will have to fight those metal carcasses of the Necrons. Claudio returns, ready to command the Cadians of the 900th Regiment once again. This company commander is armed with a power sword as well as the last pistol and frag grenades. He has an invulnerable save of 4+, plus thanks to the death mask of Olenius, and as war of trade, I chose grand strategies. The first infantry squad is the 005, also called Gunther's Rats, a unit that survived the destruction of Cadia and famous for surviving in any situation. The unit is equipped with box caster and there's heavy weapon team armed with last cannon. The second infantry squad is the 609, also called the Diards. At the time of the destruction of Cadia, they were on their way to the planet to rescue it, but they did not arrive in time. Now they seek atonement for their sin by seeking death in battle. They too have a box caster and a less cannon armed heavy weapon team. The command squad is made up of four members. They are equipped with three last guns, a plasma gun and a box caster. The Sentinel is my army's reconnaissance unit. Its name is Sheila and it's armed with a multi-laser. If there's a unit capable of reaching the distant objectives, this is it. The Chimera is the troop transport assigned to this detachment. It has good firepower for the points it costs and is useful for supporting infantry units in case of need. It's armed with a multi-laser, a heavy bolter and two last gun arrays. And finally, there is the Lima Russ, the big tank. I rely heavily on it to get rid of the biggest problems. It is armed with a battle cannon and a heavy bolter. Rolling for initiative. 6. Just thought so. Before deciding who starts the first round, but after the deployment, I have secretly assigned each round a different common protocol that will activate at the beginning of each battle round. Given the composition of the field we are playing in, I have two paths to control. The upper one, where I will send the Immortals and the Overlord, and the lower one, where I will send the Warriors with the support of the Doomstalker. The command squad begins the match deployed in the Chimera. Unfortunately, the battlefield does not allow me to exploit my numerical superiority as I would like. My goal is to control more objectives than the Necrons, but with his warriors and immortals controlling the entrances to the center of the field, it will not be easy. I will try to make my firepower prevail over him. First round. The protocol of the Conquering Tyrant, Directive 1, activates at the start of the first turn. Having the first turn is quite a hit, this means that I have the opportunity to do an entire shooting phase to try to thin out his ranks before he can move. The Chimera moves forward to take possession of objective 4. The infantry squads move to get within firing range, while Claudio keeps the objective ready to perform the action of one of my secondary objectives. Gunther's threats are approaching objective 2, while my attention is focused on the last cannon which together with the Lima Ras will target the Doomstalker. 
That thing is scary. Unlike the infantry squads, the Chimera is tough enough to withstand a round of fire from the Necrons. In addition, with the command squad inside, it also has an interesting fire power. The Diards and Sentinel move forward to give fire cover and enter firing range. The traffic jam that has created worries me, but I have no room to move them otherwise. At the end of the movement phase, Claudio takes out a wonderful Astra Militarum flag and plants it on the objective. This glorious action will allow me to score a victory point at the start of the next turn. Shooting phase. This is my chance to take out as many Necrons as possible before he can do anything. His Necrons have far superior resistance and armor than mine, I have to hope mostly for tank and Lascanos damage. Diards open fire on the Immortals, the only enemy unit in range. 7 hits at 4 plus. 3 hits. Strength 3, toughness 5, I wounded 5. Just one. No penetration, and with light cover, same with 2 plus. And he's safe. Last cannon at 5 plus, miss. Fix the aim, man! The Chimera is within range of the Warriors and fires out its entire arsenal on them, starting with the two last gun and rays. 6 hits at 4 plus. 4 hits! Strength 3, toughness 4, I need 5s! And 1 again. 0 penetration and light cover, so I save at 3 plus. Yes! Multi laser with 3 shots at 4 plus. 2! With strength 6, this time I wound the 3. Wounded! Saving with 3 plus. Saved. Heavy Bolter, 3 hits at 4. 1 hit. Winding at 3. Yes! Minus 1 penetration this time, therefore saving with 4 plus. Done. After the Chimera fails, the Sentinel, with his multi laser, also targets the Warriors. 3 shots at 4 plus. <laughs> Snake eyes. Gunther's Reds open fire on the Warriors. The last gun of the heavy weapon team is out of range, so it's 7 shots at 4 plus. 4 hits, strength 3, toughness 4, wounding a 5. 1. 3 plus to save? Nah, my first death. Haha, <laughs> so they don't shoot blanks. Thanks to the reanimation protocol, with the 5 plus, he comes back to life. Nope, finally a kill. The last cannon focuses on the Doomstalker. 1 hit at 4 plus. Yes! Strength 9, toughness 6, 3 to wound. Wounded! With minus 3 penetration, I had to use the vulnerable roll at 4 plus. And with a 6, he safe. Oh, come on! Now my favorite piece. The Limaras splits its fire and aims with the heavy bolter on the warriors. 3 shots at 4 plus. I did all the ones thanks to the Cadian's rule. 1 hit. Winning got 3 plus. Ah, never mind. It's time for the battle cannon on the Doomstalker. As the Limaras hasn't moved, he can fire twice with a turret weapon. 2d6 shots. 9, not bad. High hit at 4 plus. Reroll the one. Five hit. Strength hit, toughness six, wound the three. All of them! Invulnerable saving through at four plus. Just one went through. Nah. D3 wounds. Two wounds for the stalker. Stop watching me, you sick robot. He's preparing the aim. Now, there is the morale phase. But since the warriors have leadership 10 and with only one dead, they automatically pass the test. At the end of the round, Claudio plants his flag. Congratulations, the objective is yours. Claudio land! At the start of the turn, the Doomstalker gains a wound thanks to the Living Metal ability. Protocol of the Conquering Tyrant, Directive 1, is active this round, allowing me to add 3 inches to my unit's aura abilities. So, my Overlord casts Relentless March on the Immortals, giving them a plus 1 on the movement characteristic. While on Warriors, he casts My Will Be Done, which gives them a plus 1 on hit rolls. Then I move my army. The Overlord approaches the Chimera threateningly, ready to charge it. The Warriors are approaching Objective 2, but they're not in range to get it yet. The Immortals follow the example of the Overlord and approach in the direction of the Chimera. Now we have fun! My Warriors fire on Gunther's Reds 11 shots at 2+, plus, thanks to the Overlord's ability. I spend one common point to use the stratagem Take Cover on the infantry squad, which gives them an additional plus one to armor save. Then, thanks to the Warlord trade Grand Strategist, at 5 plus I record the common point. Or maybe not. 8 hit, strength 4, toughness 3, wounding with 3 plus, 4 wounds. With minus one penetration and plus one for Take Cover, I save at 5. 2 deaths. It could have been worse. Now it's up to the Doomstalker with the Twin Gals player, always on Gunther's Rats. Two hits on 4+, plus. both hit, need 3s to wound, just one wound. 
same as before, so saving at 5. And he's safe! Go Reds, go! Now the Doomsday Blaster with high power on the Limarras. D6 shots, just 2. Rerolling with the common point, 4. That's better. Hitting a 4 plus. Oh, come on! Just 1. Strength 10, toughness 8. Wounding with 3 plus. And he's wounded. This thing has minus 6 penetration, so my armor save is negated. Ouch! D6 damage, just 3 wounds. Here we go, take your tiny dice. Now my overlord with the attacking arrow. Hitting on a 2 plus, just right. Strength 12 and toughness 8 means wound with 3. Wounded. And with minus 6 penetration again, rolling the d6 damage. 3 wounds again, come on! Wow, so much hate! Minus 6 penetration again? <laughs> Show off! The Overlord can also fire his relic on the Chimera. The contract of the Conflagrator automatically hits the target and instead of rolling dice to wound, I roll a d6. With 6, the Chimera takes a mortal wound. Here we go! Mortal wound incoming! Why am I not surprised? The Immortals also fire on the Chimera. 10 shots at 3+. plus. Every 6 to hit scores 2 additional wounds. So, 7 hit, strength 5, toughness 7, wounding at 5, 2 wounds. Minus 1 penetration, so saving at 4+. plus. Yeah... Are my tanks made of metal or paper? I don't understand. With the Chimera so close to my units, I just have to charge. Go Overlord, I choose you! I use one common point to allow the Chimera to respond with Overwatch. Then I roll a d6 and with 5+, plus, I recover the common point. Hmm, better than the one from before, I guess. Two last gun arrays at short range are 12 shots at 6 for the charge. 4 hit, strength 3, toughness 5, 5 to wound. 3 wounds! No penetration, so saving with 3, 1 wound through. Multi-laser with 3 hits at 6, 1 hit. With strength 6, I wound at 3. Yes! Saving with 3+, plus. and here is the 4. Heavy bolter, 3 attacks at 6. No one. And after placing the wound on the general, I roll to charge. Being only 6 inches away, I easily enter with a 9. Let's see if the weapon you're carrying around really works or is it just for beauty. But first the Immortals also follow suit charging the Chimera. 11. I would say that they manage to charge. Plus, I take the objective. Thanks. The Overlord begins the fight phase with his 5 attacks at 2+. Plus. 2 misses. Strength 8, toughness 7, wounding with 3+, plus, 2 wounds. Minus 3 penetration, saving with 6. Ah, nice one. Paper armor indeed. D3 wounds, 5 total. Hmm, my general is just as strong as yours. Immortal's turn, 10 attacks at 3+, plus. 5, strength 5, toughness 7, wound at 5, 1 wound. No penetration, so saving at 3+. Plus. Just one wound left, guys! Now it's up to the Chimera to attack, one hit at 6 on the Immortals. <laughs> the only unit to have to test morale are the Gunther's Reds. With two deaths, I need to do five or less with a d6. Let's try this again with a common point, shall we? Holy f And you're complaining about not doing sixes. One fleece. I roll one d6 for each remaining model, for each one and other fleece. Yes. Run, Forest, run. I try to retrieve the common point at five plus. Forget it. At the end of my turn, having two quarters of the battlefield clear from enemy unit, I earn four victory points thanks to my secondary objective, Purge the Vermin. All in all, this turn was not that bad for me. Certainly the Doomstalker and the Immortals could work harder. If they don't wake up the next round, they will deal with the Overlord. However, considering Simone's turn, I certainly can't complain. Guys, my first turn was beautiful. With all the volume of fire I have, I've barely managed to kill a simple warrior. My tanks are in a really bad shape, the Chimera was left with a wound. Honestly, I wasn't expecting a charge in the first round, I was wrong to underestimate this possibility. Anyway, thanks to the fact that the Chimera is not dead, Andrea will now be in an exposed position and I will be able to fill him with bullets. At the start of the round, I earned 5 points for objective 3 and 1 additional point for the banner planted, reaching 6 victory points. My second turn is probably the most important for the game. I have to try to unlock the situation. The fight with the Chimera made my movements even more limited. I have to do something to clear the traffic jam. Also, with the Gunther's threats decimated, I no longer have any chance to contest Objective 2, as warriors like my infantry squads have objective secured ability, and mine are outnumbered. I just have to focus on the Objective 4 area. 
First, my command squad disembarks from the Chimera and positions itself out of combat but within 3 inches of the transport. The Chimera backs away as little as it can, leaving the Necrons totally exposed and setting the stage for my shooting phase. Claudio finally moves in range to give orders to the Diehards. Unable to advance towards the objective, Gunther's Rats prepare to fire. Claudio gives the order first rank fire, second rank fire on the diehards and allows them to change the weapon type from rapid fire 1 to rapid fire 2. Oh, there will be a hail of bullets! The sentinel shoots the immortals with the multi laser, 3 shots at 4 plus. 2 hits! Strength 6, toughness 5, wounding with 3. Yes, the other dies also fails. The command squad is able to fire on the Overlord since it's the closest unit in sight. One of them throws a frag grenade. D6 hits. 5! Great! 5 shots of the grenade plus 4 shots of the last guns hitting a 4 plus. 5 hits. Strength 3, toughness 5, wounding at 5. Just one. With no penetration, I save with 3 plus. And he's safe. 2 shots of the plasma gun at 4 plus. 1 hit. With strength 7, I wound at 3 plus. Wounded! Minus 3 penetration, so invulnerability roll at 4 plus. Fails. One wound to the Overlord. That sounds good! Claudio fires the last pistol on the Immortals at 3 plus. Hey. Andrea, did you bring an umbrella? Cause it's about to rain! The Diehards fire on short range to the Immortals, which together with Claudio's order brings the total number of shots to 32, to which are added those of a frag grenade. D6 shots for the grenade. 4! 36 total shots at 4 plus! I divide the shoots in 4 groups I repeat the ones thanks to the Cadian rule 26 hits I divide again into 3 groups Strength 3, Toughness 5, Wounding at 5 Just... 2 With the light cover and 0 penetration, I save at 2+, plus, but still 1 dies 36 shots, 26 hit, and only 2 wounded and 1 dead?! You can't be serious! What do you say? Was my umbrella big enough? I think I spent all my luck in the double six of last game. Anyway, the last cannon shoots the immortals at 4 plus. Yeah, never mind. Rolling to see if the reanimation protocol activates at 5 plus? But no, one immortal dead. Gunther's threats aim at the warrior. 4 hits at 4 plus. Double six and double one. I wounded five. Double two. Someone is making fun of me. Last cannon on the Doomstalker at 4 plus. Oh, hit! Strength 9, toughness 6, I need 3 plus. Yes! Invulnerable save at 4 plus. 2. Reroll with a common point. 5. There we go. Although not seen from the image, the Limaras sees the Overlord and he's the closest target. Then try to hit him with the Heavy Bolter. 3 hits at 5 plus. 2 hits. Same strength and toughness, so wounding at 4. 1 wound. Saving with 3. Easy! The battle cannon instead fires on the Doomstalker with 2d6 shots. 8 shots at 5 as the Limaras has fewer than 7 wounds left. 3 hit. I wound with 3 plus. <laughs> Morale phase for the Immortals, but with 10 leadership and only 1 dead, they automatically pass the test. At the beginning of the second battle round, the protocol of the Vengeful Star kicks in, and thanks to the Mephrit dynasty, I gain access to both directives. In my command phase, I earn 15 victory points for controlling objectives 1 and 4, and for controlling more objectives than the opponent, thus making 19 victory points. Then, both Doomstalker and Overlord gain a wound thanks to the Living Metal ability. Finally, the Overlord casts My Will Be Done on the Immortals. In this phase, I move my base units and I hold the Doomstalker still, so I can fire the high-powered Doomsday Blaster. The Immortals get closer to the Diehards just to make sure they don't miss the charge, while the Warriors get closer to the Infantry Squad to be able to shoot at half of the range and in the meanwhile take control of Objective 2. My Overlord targets the Diehards with his Relic and rolls 1d6 for each model in the unit. 9d6, every 6 is a mortal wound. Just one. Nah. I guess I can take that. Next to target the diehards are the immortals. I use the stratagem take cover from one common point to add plus one to the diehards armor save. Then I try to retrieve the common point on five plus. <laughs> sure. Eight hits at two plus. Every six scores two additional wound rolls. Eight through. Three to wound. Any six to wound is resolved with additional minus one penetration. With light cover denied and the six he did, thanks to take over, I save at five plus with white dice and six with black dice. 
Well, that's for that. Okay, now it's starting to be a little too many. Since my mortals have a Tesla weapon, I use the stratagem Malevolent Arcing for one common point, which, after making an attack with a Tesla weapon, allows me to roll 1d6 for each unit within 6 inches of the target, with 4 plus, suffers a mortal wound. Starting with Claudio, 6, a mortal wound to you. Now the Sentinel, another 6, a mortal wound to you as well. It's up to the Chimera, 2, nope, reroll with the common point, 4, that's better, goodbye Chimera. Ah, okay, it would be dead in any case this turn. Now I have to see if it explodes on 6, but having too many units close by, I can't afford any more damage. It's the first time I find myself hoping it won't explode. Oh, okay, see ya Chimera. And that's not all, the warriors have yet to shoot and target Gunther's threats. 13 hits at 3+, plus, 8 passed, I wounded 3, just 6 perfect wounds. With these rolls it denies me the armor, so I can only remove the unit. Next on the list, the Doomstalker, Twingles player on the command squad to attacks at 4+, plus. just 1, 3 to wound, 6, see ya, this Astra go down like flies. And now the Doomsday Blaster with high power on the Lima Russ, D6 hits at 4+, plus. just 1, really? At least hit him, no huh? In this phase, I charge with the Overlord on the Command Squad and with Immortals on Sentinel and Diehards. The Command Squad responds with Overwatch for one command point. I try to retrieve the command point with 5 plus. Nope. D6 shots for the grenade. 6. Having all the same characteristics, I roll all the dice together. 8 white dice for the grenade and last gun, 2 black dice for plasma. All at 6. <laughs> no one. Don't you feel sorry for me, guys? Being 2 inches away, he automatically enters combat. Now, the Immortal, 5 to engage in combat with both, 7, they arrive without problems. A good Cadian commander can't stand and watch as his men are slain, so Claudio makes a heroic intervention on the Immortals. Come on guys, crush these insects unworthy to exist and regain the fame lost during the great sleep. Not so fast, you'll have to deal with Claudio's 40 points first. Having charged, the first to fight is my overlord making 5 attacks at 2 plus on the common squad. All 5. With strength 8, I wounded 2. 4 wounds. With minus 3 penetration, I'd say it's your time. Bye, guys. And he consolidated 3 inches towards the nearest enemy unit. Now it's up to the Immortals. 2 hits on Diehards and 6 on Claudio. All at 3 plus, starting with the Diehards. 1 hit. 3 to wound. Wounded. No penetration, so I need 5. Wow, he has an armor after all. And now the 6 hits on Claudio at 3 plus. 4 hit, 3 to wound, and 3 wounds, saving at 4 plus thanks to the relic, just 1, reroll a dice thanks to the warlord trait, perfect, only 1 wound. The diehards piles in on the immortals, it's up to the infantry squad to respond, 5 attacks at 4 plus, 2 hit, strength 3, toughness 5, at 5 plus, damn toughness 5, you're punching metal, what did you expect? Oh, you're right. Damn cans. The Sentinel makes its attack at 4 plus. Hit! Strength 5, toughness 5, 4 plus wound. Nope, it's Claudio's time. With his power sword, 3 attacks at 3 plus. To hit! Strength 4, toughness 5, winning at 5. Here's the 6! Minus 3 penetration, so I say with 6. Ah, uh, no. The animation protocol? Not even that. Well done, Claudio! One kill! The only ones to do the morale phase are the diehards. With 5 deaths, I need 2 or less. Fail. Let's see how many others flee. No one! Just one run away. You coward! With leadership 10, the immortals automatically pass the morale phase. Then, at the end of my turn, I earn 4 victory points for the secondary objective Purge the Vermin, thus going to 23 victory points. To be honest, I don't see many ways out of this disaster. The Necron's toughness makes things already difficult without considering the dice rolls I'm doing. But despite everything, the game is not over yet. If I can get rid of the Immortals and the Overlord in this turn, I can still catch up. With 17 points gap, I just had to eliminate the Lima Rust. And if my Overlord manages to stay alive at the end of the Astra's round, I can consider the game over. 
At the start of turn 3, the protocol of the Undying Legions, directed 2, is activated, allowing me to reroll a dice for every reanimation protocol. Thanks to Objective 3 and his beautiful flag of Claudio Land, I reach 11 victory points. Now all my attention will be on fighting with the mortals, as I can do absolutely nothing to stop the warriors and the Doomstalker. At the beginning of the round, Claudio recovers the 3 wounds thanks to his relic. Obviously, only one wound. Claudio returns to 3 wounds. Better than nothing, I would say. The only unit I can move is the Lima Ras, which moves forward to have the Overlord in line of sight. In the shooting phase, Claudio gives the order fixed bayonets to Diars, which allows them to fight as if they were in the combat phase. 4 attacks at 4 plus. 3, not bad! Strength 3, toughness 5, winning at 5. Yeah, I should have expected. Claudio shoots with the last pistol on the Immortals. A 3 plus shot. Hit! Strength 3, toughness 5, 5 to wound. Oh yes! No penetration, so saving with 3 plus. Nah. Reanimation protocol at 5 plus. 2 again. Rerolling thanks to the directive 2. Failed again. Stay down, piece of junk. The Lima Ras throws everything on the Overlord, starting with the Heavy Bolter. 3 shots at 5. <laughs> Not even one. Heavy moved, it shoots only once with the Battle Cannon. D6 hits. 4 at 5. 2 hit. Strength 8, toughness 5, wounding at 3. Reroll with the command point. Still nothing. Invulnerability at 4 plus. Fail. D3 damage. 2. I was hoping it was 3. Uh, it doesn't matter. The next turn, he goes back to 3 wounds. I try to retrieve the command point with 5 plus. This Warlord rate has become a meme by now. In the combat phase, the player whose turn is not taking place starts to fight. Then, Immortals with 4 attacks at 3 plus on Claudio. 2 hit. Wounding at 3. Both. Immunerability at 4 plus, 1 wound. And you go back to 2 wounds. The first to attack are the Diars, so they pile in. 4 attacks at 4 plus as before. 1 hit. 5 to wound, exactly as before. The Sentinel makes an attack at 4 plus. And miss. Well, Claudio, if you want something done, do it yourself. So, 3 attacks at 3 plus. All 3. Wounding at 5, 2 wounds. Saving with 6. But I think I can say goodbye to my immortals. Not so immortal though. Ha! Don't mess with Claudio! Strong of his recent victory, Claudio consolidates forward, ready to challenge the Overlord. He's waiting for you. Go Claudio, show that the Cadians do not give up. With the start of my third round, thanks to the primary objective, I go to 38 victory points. Then, thanks to the living metal skill, the Overlord gains a wound, and so returning to 3. The Overlord accepts the challenge of the insect and approaches ready to crush it. The warriors, on the other hand, approach the Limarras in case of a possible charge. My Doomstalker fires at the Limarras with the high powered ray. D6 attacks. Just one. Reroll with the common point. Definitely better. 6 attacks at 4 plus. 2 hit. Strength 10, toughness 8, 3 to wound. Both. With minus 6 penetration, I roll directly 2d6 wounds. Are you kidding me? Ah, those paper tanks. Warriors, please, destroy that thing. 22 attacks at 3 plus on the Lima Ras. 14 hit, strength 4, toughness 8, I wound with 6. 3 wounds! With minus 2 penetration, I save at 5 plus. Ha, huh, guess who's dead? Rolling to see if it explodes with 6. And it goes like this. Now that the Lima Ras is gone, I can crush Claudio, charge with the Overlord. Let the duel begin. As there's no longer a chance for me to win the game, Andrea wanted to rise the stakes. He proposed that whoever wins the duel will win the game, regardless of the victory points obtained. Of course I accepted, so from now on we will ignore everything else and focus only on the duel until the end. Come on Claudio, you can do it! The first to attack is the Overlord since he charged. 5 attacks at 2+, plus, 3 hits, I wound at 2, all three. With minus three penetration, I use the invulnerable save at four. Hold on, Claudio. Yes! Go, Claudio! Go, Claudio! Go, Claudio! Claudio responds with the power sword. Three attacks at three plus. Two hit. Strength three, toughness five, wounding at five. One. Four plus in vulnerability. One wound. Overlord, you are fighting a human. Aim lower. The Overlord responds with his hyperface glaive by making five attacks at two plus. 
I mean, wounding with two. Finally, all three. Saving with four plus. Ah, <laughs> two fails. Reroll one with the common point. Yes, he's still alive. Left with a wound, but still alive. Claudio responds with three attacks at three plus. Two hit. I wound with five. Reroll the dice that it's not in a balance. Ah, both miss. That was close. Can we end this, please? Overlord, finish him with your five attacks. Are you serious? I wound that too. Both wound. Invulnerability at four plus. Come on, Claudio. <laughs> no, he's dead. It's okay, Claudio. You did great. Good job. You can't compete with the might of the Necrons. Get off my planet, useless bugs. Well, this match was a complete disaster for me. I'm truly shocked that the dice rolls have come across. How do you get two wounds out of 26 dice? I think my Astra Militarum suffer from some form of stage anxiety because they do pretty well in unrecorded games. I probably could have placed the troops better in the field too, but what's done is done. I would say that Claudio is the MVP of the match. He alone managed to take out an entire team of immortals and keep up with your overlord despite his value of only 40 points. It's true, I must admit that this time it went pretty badly for you. To me, on the contrary, it went pretty well. Although I could have destroyed the Limoras in turn 1 if only the Doomstalker wanted to hit a little more shots. But I can't complain, I ended up with only 6 dead models in the end. All in all, the Necrons are very nice to play and their characteristics makes them very formidable opponents. Before finishing we wanted to thank you so much for the support you are showing us. We already have 200 subscribers with only 3 battle reports. It's incredible! The Warhammer community is truly fantastic. I believe there is no better community. But we're not done yet! Here are the participants to our shoutout of this video. Smoking Dragon Minis, these Chaos Space Marines are very interesting and I really like how you made the bases. Keep it up! Dirk Life Minis, nice work on this Blood River. You have lighted the muscles well and I really like the color scheme you choose for him. Alex Paints WH, I really love how you painted this aspiring sorcerer. And the contrast of colors makes it very well. This guy also has his own YouTube channel. In case you would like to see his process of painting, the channel's name is Our War Game. Iron Ore Studio, a Black Templar, this outrider looks like he's been through a lot of battles with his bike. That skull on the side of the bike is really dope. Quetzal Minis, the diorama you posted is simply magnificent. The colors seem alive and you have perfectly reproduced the decay of the Death Guard. Well done! Smashed Labs, man this Magnus is stunning. The armor is beautiful and makes a wonderful contrast to his dark skin. It would be a great piece to see on the battlefield. I really like it. And with this we conclude. In case you too want to participate in the shoutout of the next video, leave a comment including your Instagram name under this video and post your image on Instagram by tagging us and using the hashtag TWShoutout. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That's it guys, see you next video!